and I'm welcome gone. to another episode of our Planescape Torment Let's Play. Well, last time we escaped the mortuary uh, and we uh, traveled a little bit around this uh, area here in the hive, the, the mortuary, area, mortuary area. All right. So we're going to continue with that today in spite of what I said last time. <laughs> So, I hope you're alright guys, I hope you are fine, uh, I hope you're having a good week, and uh, yeah, we're gonna just uh, travel around this area a little bit, and uh, pick up some quests, uh, talk to some people, and such like. So, let's go into this house first of all, here we got Angyar. This man looks haunted. His eyes are half-lidded, as if he had trouble sleeping, and his hair is long and unkempt. Kempt. His beard is fleckled. Flecked. Flecked. That's uh, almost Swedish, guys. With bits of dead skin and old bits of food, he doesn't seem to notice you as you approach. Greetings. The man glances up at the sound of your voice, and his slack expression vanishes. It looks like someone has lit two fires in his eyes. What be your business barging into my barging into my house? His eyes narrow and his teeth clenched. Get, or I'll send you back to wherever grave you crawled from. Calm your oh, let's see what other options are. Farewell then. The man throws a parting shot at you uh, at your back. You best never cross my door again, you wretched stinking bastard. He's not very pleasant, is he? But he seems to be uh, under a bit of strain, so we're gonna leave without another word. And here we got wife of Angyar. She, funny how she doesn't even get a name, isn't it? Uh, in this male-controlled world of gaming. Now this woman looks to be in her middle years, and her hair has streaks of grey running through it. Lines of worry crisscross her face. As she sees you, she seems torn. She seems torn between asking you to leave and calling for the man at the table. Greetings. Yet, yet best leave, for I called me husband. It won't take candy to have him barged their way into our home. What is this with barging? The, the door was open, honestly. I right, calm down, I just have some questions. She glances towards her husband, worry in her eyes. I, I am not the time stranger. Do not be troubling me with such things. <laughs> Excuse me, are you all right? Me? She seems surprised. Oh, hey, hey. She lowers her voice. You best leave. My husband has not been himself of late. You best not provoke him with your presence. <clears throat> I spoke with him. He seems troubled. What's wrong with him? He's been out of sorts of late. A touch of the cough, maybe. She gives an unconvincing half shrug. shrug. Uh, if you tell me what's wrong, I might be able to help. I think I think he's done something he regrets. Her weary expression melts into despair. I think he signed one of the dead contracts. I cannot imagine what possessed him to do such a foolish thing. Dead contracts? The dead, the dustmen, have contracts that give them the right to somebody's body after they die. What do they, they do? We know this already, we've been in there. Animate it with their black magics, turn it into one of the walking dead, make it a worker till... Till it rots away. Why did your husband sign such a thing? He may have been a goat... Uh, he may have been goat eager to bring home some more jink than custom. He's prideful, but I think he's hurt himself more by doing so. Can this contract be undone? She looks at you surprised, then sighs. I've tried. I've spoken to the dustman he did a sign it with, but he, he's cold and chill, like all the dusties. He even lectured me on, on uh, my husband as if I had no right to try and help him. Her lips become a tight, thin line as if picturing the dustman's face. He was cold and cruel, he was. Uh, let me see what I can do. Who was this dustman your husband signed the contract with? The Dusty calls himself Gravesend. 
I know not his first name. He has a table at the Dustman Bar in the Hive. Gathering Dust, I believe the place is named. You can most like find him there, trying to get more people to sign contracts. Updated my journal. I'll seek him out then. Uh, head out to the street outside, go to the memorial stone, and then head south and west from there. That's an unusually complicated uh, description, woman. She taps her finger against her chin. You should run right, right into it. There's one of them. Her face wrinkles in disgust. Walking corpses out front. Very well, I shall go and see what I can do. I won't turn away such a friendly gesture. She seems grateful, then her worried expression returns. But I must ask you not to let, let on I asked you to do such a thing. My husband has a terrib terrible temper. And if he finds out... If he were to find out, she shudders. Uh, let's see. Do we? We don't necessarily want to. We're we're some fence sitters, aren't we? We're gonna try and. Yeah, I can't make any promises. We will have to see what happens. Then I ask that you keep as quiet as you can about the matter. Yes, I will do that. So we need to go and talk to this dust man. But before we do, we're gonna <laughs> go up here a little bit. There's a heart. That's nice. Up to the memorial we're headed. See all the dustmen here. Uh, being the sand sender we talked to already. So you see this black stuff around here. Click on that. That's the uh, vines with black leaves. The stems looks extremely sharp. And this here is a, an obsidian mo monument, and it has names chiseled on it. And we can talk to Quentin. The man before you looks like the uh, looks to be middle of height and years. He is stout with a thick, bullish neck, and his shoulders are hunched, as if a great weight was pressing upon them. Ba -ba 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 upon them, he wears an impatient look as he stares at the black monolith in front of him. Greetings. The man throws you a glance. There is room, Cutter. No need to ask my leave to stand here. Uh, actually, I wanted to know what this monolith was. It's a tombstone for the plains, he scoffs. Graveyards of names are scratched on that rock. Uh, can only hope my name's one of, uh, the one that'll split this stone in twain. He points at the base of the monolith. Quentin, right there. Hammered in just hard enough to send the damn thing crashing down. Tombstone for the plains? Hey, Quentin smiles ruefully. The dust is scratched the names of the dead on this monument here. The just as around him, and on the walls of this place. Not enough space by my reckoning, but no matter, they do their best. Can barely read half the names. Now what are you doing here? Reading the new arrivals. Try and find a new one every day. Try and remember if I knew him. Nothing more. I see. Farewell. So we can look at the inside here as well. This obsidian wall has thousands of names curved into it. Oops. And here we have Sev Tai. This woman's face looks broken and she's covered in scars. They look like bite marks and fingernail cuts. She's cradling the shreds of several rags in her hands and is staring emptied, emptily at the wall of the monument at the names there. Greetings. Psst. Get back. The woman's teeth peel back, displaying a row of black canines. What do you want with Sev Tai? What's the matter? What's wrong? Those cows, cow, cows men wrecked my cart, attacked me and killed three of my sisters who tried to stop them. Not sisters anymore. Now there's nothing but names on this memorial wall. Cows men? A faction, they say. What they are is an adult bunch that runs wild through the hive and does whatever they please. We never did no harm to them. Then they lo lope in like dogs and tear apart anything within their reach. Who are these cows and men they attack that attacked you? They're a hiver gang, a bunch of adult, a adult sods that call themselves the, the Starved Dogs Barking or some such barmy nonsense. 
So let's see. We are going to say. You know, I wouldn't mind penning some men on, in the dead book for some coin. You've got the copper, we'll talk terms, maybe. Or should we say, their actions were unjust. If you wish, I can see that the matter is rectified. If three deaths they caused, then three deaths shall be these starved dogs sketched by blah, blah, blah. Anyway, that's what we're going to say. A copper earring in your purse if you pen three of those murdering swords in the death book. Jake? I'll see to it that they are put in the dead book. Can you tell me where they might be found? Go to the south gate, spirewards from here. Then walk around the block until you come to, the, to a place where men run in circles, howling at the, the sig sky. There, that's the sigil sky, by the way. Uh, there's the star dogs, they are. Yep, I've been to that block. It's the one with all the harlots and drunks south of here. I'll go there and Updated report. my journal. Finally, we can speak in the uh, memorial to death of names. You see a dustman with a crooked smile frozen on his face. Despite the smile, his eyes are as dull as stones. His right arm is shorter than the left, and he keeps it tucked into his side as if cradling a small child. Greetings. The dustman's eyes slide over you. Name? The way he speaks the word, it sounds like at the tolling of a bell. Okay, I need to redo that then. Name. Uh, I don't know. No name. No name. Can't help you. The dustman speaks in a curious sing-song voice. You need to give that give a name if you want to see where it's died. What? Updated my journal. Give a name when you're born. Give it back when you need it no more. Death of names. Death of names. His eyes swim across the monolith, then the walls of the area. Buried many names here, death on names has. Tell me a name, I'll show its grave. Ooh. So let's say, Dayonara. His eyes roll to the back of his head, then pop back. With a wild gleam, his eyes run across the walls of the monument, scanning the names at inhuman speed. Then he points at the section of the wall. Buried. Examine the spot he is pointing at. Chiseled into the black stone is a tiny, in tiny cramped writing is the name you requested. It is almost lost beneath the sea of names around it. I had another name. So let's see. Dahl. Shakes his head. Not dead yet, that name is. Not buried here. Not time, not time. Uh, let's try another name. Uh, 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 Adan. He shakes his head. Not dead yet. That name is not buried here. Not time, not time. <clears throat> Can you bury a name for me? He nods, then unfolds his small hand from where it's cradled on the, his side. It's, it looks atrophied. It is the size of a child's hand. It costs jink to bury jink to bury a name. Three coppers. Three. Ooh, I can put Quentin's name in here. Let's try it. He shakes his head. Not dead yet. Okay. Uh. What else could we do? Deonara and Dal. No, uh, I guess not. No name for today. I guess we can come back to this guy later. So, we need to go and find these Chaos Men. Ooh, and I need some health, don't I? Let's see. Let's uh, send Mort out to deal with these guys while I stitch up a bit. There we go. Let's go for that as well. Alright. Why can't I attack them? There we go. The battle on our hands. Who's that? Ingress. I need to talk to her as well. You're running about, you are. Okay, let's go for this dude instead. What am I attacking with? Okay, I need to 
I'm hurt. This last two as well. Done. And we need some more stitching. I'm gonna look like a. I don't know. Muppet after this. Okay, yeah. so they are fleeing. Let's uh, ignore them and let's see if we can find ingress. She should be slightly below the header. Uh, you see a haggard woman wrapped in rags. Her hair is disheveled and dirty and her complexion is extremely dark. Burns cover her arms and her... And her right hand is a fused lump of flesh. It looks melted like wax exposed to great heat. Updated my journal. What is it you want with me? The woman's accent is thick and you have difficulty making out what she's saying. One but to leave? Not leaving the city, so I'm not. I can't try it. I can't try it. It's not a city, it's a prison to everywhere. Everywhere? There's worlds, there's. Her eyes gleam madly. Plains that be sinking sand, fields thirsty, nettles be. Sightless worlds where your limbs are given life and hate, cities of dust, whose people are dust and whisper ash. The house without doors, the twilight lands, probably the twilight lands, the singing winds, the singing winds. She starts to sob quietly, but she seems all out of tears. And shadows, the terrible shadows there be. Where are these places? Where's, where's the places? She flips the lamp of her right hand in, in an arc, gesturing at the cityscape. There's all here be. Doors, doors, here to everywhere. Doors. You, you're not knowing this. She squints at you, and her teeth start chattering. Tell you I will. Beware every space you walk through or touch in this thrice cursed city. Doors, gates, arches, windows, picture frames. The open mouth of a statue. The space is between shelves. Beware any space bounded on all sides. All the, the all these are doors to other places. What do you mean? Every door has a key it does, and with this key they show their true nature. An arch becomes a portal, a picture frame becomes a portal, a window becomes a portal. All eager to take you someplace else. They steal you away. She raises the lamp of her right hand, and sometimes what's on the other side takes part of you as tight. What are these keys? The keys. The keys number as many as the doors in this city. Every door a key. Every key a door. The teeth starts ch chattering again as if, if she's cold. And the key is? A key is anything. Maybe an emotion, an iron nail held between sec your second and fifth fingers. A thought through... A, a thought thought three times. Then thought once in reverse. Or it may be a glass rose. And uh, these are all I keys that open journal. these doors. Yes, her teeth starts chattering and, and she clenches her mouth and squints her eyes. Yes, I can't leave, I can't leave. Updated How do you my get journal. Here? From, she seems to calm slightly and her eyes take on a thousand leagues stare. Came from a place else from here almost a life ago. Hummed a tune by a glade with two dead trees that had fallen together. A brilliant door opened in the space between. The cross trees showed me the city on the other side. I stepped through, ended here. Why can't you go back? Tried! She tries to sob again, but no tears come. Tried! All the doors here lead to other places. She shudders and grips her melted right hand. Went, th went through thrice ten portals. Some a purpose, some an accident. None of them are right. Can't find way back. There must be a portal that can take you back. Can't even leave here. This square. And there, a place of dead death behind the gate waits for me. She points at the mortuary behind the gate, then turns back to, to you, her face desperate. Can't go anywhere in this city. Can't go anywhere? What do you mean? Anything could be a door. <laughs> She's afraid, poor lass. Any arch there, any door here, could be a portal. Don't know the key. Could get sent to another horrible place. Her teeth, her her teeth, 
Her teeth start, start shattering again. Got to stay away from the closed spaces. All could be doors, could have a key on me, and I not be knowing it. You... You're afraid to go through any door or arch because it might be a portal. She nods, her teeth chattering. How long have you been afraid of this? She squints. Since the last time I walked through the last portal, the place where I'm ha my hand... She stops. Since my tenth turning. I'm in my fourth tenth turning that now. Her teeth begin chattering again. Thirty years? You haven't walked through any door for thirty years. Her vision seems to clear slightly. She looks up at you, her teeth still chattering. Uh, so, if you got here, there must be a portal that can take you back. It's only a matter of finding it. She smiles. Her teeth aren't chattering because she's cold. They are moving around inside her mouth. Her gums twisting as teeth shift, shift as the teeth shift about. They rise and recede as you watch, chattering as they rattle against each other. What? She hisses at you. Only takes one portal you step through to uh, accident to drive the, the fear in you. I went through thrice ten, lost my hand, burned my flesh, and lost my sense. She looks at her feet. More and more. I'm sorry, if I can find some means to help you, I will. Updated my Farewell. journal. Now that is an interesting woman, I tell you. Oh, we're going the wrong way. That is an interesting woman. Now here we've got a zombie named the Post. That seems interesting. Let's do, let's investigate. This filthy-looking corpse is in sad shape. Its shoulders are slumped, and one of its legs is broken, causing it to lean to one side. Stains cover it from head to toe. Judging from the smell of, uh, and the texture, the stains run from rotten fruit to mud and bird droppings. To add to the indignity, graffiti has been carved into its body, and several notices have been nailed into its chest, back and head. <laughs> yep, I thought I was in bad shape. Don't all the nails hurt? The corpse makes no response. So let's see, examine the corpse. Despite the many stitches, the corpse's rotting skin is peeling in several places, revealing long stretches of muscle and bone. You'd guess that the zombie is frequently used as target practice. The fruit and mud stains aside, some of the tears, tears in the skin still have rocks and bits of glass lodged in them. One wicked looking cobblestone is still em embedded in the side of its head. Pry out the cobblestone. Grab a hold of the cobblestone and pull it out of the corpse's head. Traces of brain matter and rotting flesh slowly drip from it. It looks like whatever it was in its head turned to ooze long ago. Ooh. <laughs> um, so let's see here again. Yeah, examine the graffiti and notices. A number of the leaflets that have been uh, have been ruined by rain, but some of them are still legible. One tackle to his back is from some one something called the Office of Vermin and Disease Control. The one on his forehead looks like a, a bill of fare for a restaurant. What the one on his uh, chest looks like an official note, and another one appears to be some sort of want ad. So uh, look at the post for Office of Vermin and Disease Control. To those hive citizens wishing grateful employ with the most honorable and generous sigil gov uh, government, in wire for forthwith at Office of Vermin and Dis Disease Control to help stem plague of brain rats. Bounties paid, copper given for each rat tail brought. Tails must be, must be genuine and from rat only. No cat, dog, or fiend tail accepted. Office several streets south and west of the mortuary gate. In Lower Hive, ask for official inspector in charge, the respected Phineas T. Lort. <laughs> the 1020, yeah, the, the much numbered one. Funny side note, Lort in Swedish means poo. 
examine the other notices. Uh, so let's see, we've done the disease control, let's examine the bill of fare. Someone has posted a bill of fare for the gathering dust bar, but the bill of fare cannot be read as the words smoldering corpse bar has been scrawled in charcoal over the bill. Smoldering corpse bar? The zombie immediately jerks its left arm upwards and points far to the southeast. A moment later, the arm falls back to its side with a thumb. Reminds me of a job I once had, uh, Mort says. He seems embarrassed. Well, I mean, without the arms. <laughs> hmm, I wonder if this would work with the other notices. <laughs> so, let's see. Uh, examine the official notice. Public notice by the order of the Judiciary Council and in accordance with the citizenry of Sigil, let it be known to those defacing the registered servant of the dustman, either by graffiti, malicious attack, or by the posting by posting notices, will constitute constitute felonious assault, and the perpetrator will be answerable for the vandalism of said servant, by the order of the Hall of Speakers. So ironic that that is a notice that is pinned to the corpse itself. Other notices please. Uh, examine the want ad. Wanted able-bodied person willing to investigate a matter of the utmost importance to the dustman cause. Will offer suitable compensation upon successful completion of said task. Interested parties inquire with initiate Norachi gathering dar dust bar. Gathering dust bar. The zombie immediately jerks his left arm upwards and points west to the building before you. A moment later, the arm falls back to the side with a thump. I think that was all the notes. Yep, examine the graffiti. The graffiti runs from obscenities about the dustmen to slogans, glorifying what appears to be local gangs. One piece of graffiti catches your eye. Someone has carved the name Pharaoh on the corpse's left arm. And slashed an X across it. Mm. Pharaoh. Updated my journal. The zombie immediately jerks his left arm upwards and points far to the west and downwards. A moment later, the arm falls back to its side with a thump. Uh, thanks. Looks like my skills have increased. Mort gained a level. Now this was very interesting so far. To the west and downwards is where we can find Farad. And if you recall, we're looking for Farad because he allegedly has our journal. Who is Anna? Ah, I never, I can't see, can see what she said. Uh, Anna says, You see a striking, well, she doesn't say this, we see this. You see a striking red haired girl dressed in a leather armor. Her right arm is covered with a series of interlocking plates that look as if they were taken from the skin of some creature, and a horned shoulder piece protects her left arm. Oddly enough, she has a tail that is flickering back and forth as you watch. Pike off! Greetings. The girl ignores you. <laughs> so, we can talk to her. Uh, let's be a bit naive. I'm looking for someone named Pharaoh. Do you know where I can find him? Hey, I might. I might say more if you sweeten the question, eh? She clicks her tongue and rubs two fingers together. Jink jink, eh? Jink <laughs> jink. Jink Mort says she means money. Oh. Hey, she glances at Mort, then shrugs. What the skull said? Art coin. Uh, so let's see. Alright, how much? How much is it, uh, is it to, uh, to yet to know, eh? She studies you, then folds her arm. arms. Come on, I've got all day, I haven't. How about ten? That enough? That lump of corpse isn't enough to wheat a fated appetite. Wet a fated appetite. You'll be needing more if you want to make friends, Tard. Tard? Rude. Uh, okay, how about twenty then? Hey, alright then. She pockets the money. It's gone so quickly you have no idea where it vanished to. Look for him in the alley spire wards from the mortuary. That's to be to the south and west of the mortuary, eh? 
Oddly enough, south and west of the mortuary is an alley filled with heavily armed thugs. Know anything about that? Oh, eh? Well, maybe you'd best be asking them where old Stutter, Stutter Crutch is. Stutter Crutch, eh? Uh, let's see. Bluff, enough of your lies. Tell me where fair this girl, or you'll be soon all your soon number among the city's dead. Bar that, I have nothing more to say to you, Burke. Git You better watch your tongue, girl, or it's coming off. You better remember that if we speak again. Hey, pike off to whatever wherever you came from then. Farewell to you too. Those deaders today said walking ones looks like. Right, so we are now having a lot of things to do in the Gathering Dust Bar. But that is going to have to wait until next time, folks. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, leave a like. Leave a comment, how do you think we're doing, guys? How do you think we're doing? And share the video. Uh, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye!